Perfect. All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk, the show where we cover the swag inside and out. Of course, I'm your tour guide around the swag. See Wells coming at you. And we are going to do one of our news and notes shows, man. We're going to cover a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Got a little bit of, ooh, got a little bit of Legacy Bowl talk coming at you. Got swag basketball, some swag baseball, swag softball. Uh, we're going to kind of go through it all. Um, so, man, thank y'all for locking in with us. Uh, hit those socials. They're on the screen down below. Facebook is Swag Talk. Twitter, Swag Talk 76. And Instagram is Swag Talk. Uh, make sure you like the videos and share them. And feel free to hit that subscription button, man. It don't cost nothing. Like they say, it's free 99. So go ahead and hit that subscription button if you haven't done so already. If you have, man, thank you for subscribing. And please, please let somebody else know to subscribe. And like the videos, man. Get, hit those, hit that like button. Get those likes up, and um, we're gonna just go ahead and do what we do, man. So, um, like I said, busy, busy swag weekend, man. Got a lot of, got a lot of good things taking place. Uh, the city of New Orleans was swag central, so that you know that always is a good thing. So, um, I, I I'm gonna share my thoughts on the Legacy Bowl. Uh, of course, me and the wife was there. And uh, we enjoyed our time. Now, the game, you know, the game is always going to be not the most spectacular game because, you know, it's an all-star game. And these guys don't really have a lot of um, a lot of time and experience together. But um, still was an all-in-all. It was a, was a great thing, man. It was a great outing. Um, weather was nice, of course. Uh, the crowd, you know, the crowd grew as the game went on. And, <clears throat> excuse me. The crowd was very energetic, man. Like they, especially the the, uh, the the sweat contingency, man. They they held it down, and, and you know, like I saw a lot of people with HBCU gear from all over. But um, like anytime somebody from the swag made a play, man, the crowd went crazy. Um, it was just like watching a home football game, watching people cheer for guys uh, making plays. So. Um, really, really good, man. Shout out to the Alabama State uh, Marching Harness Band. But y'all announcer, man, can y'all please tell him to stop yelling in the mic? <laughs> it was like crazy. Um, but other than that, man, really, really good performance by the team Robinson defense. And the team gave the defense was strong as well. Um, and we're going to talk about some standouts from the defensive side of the ball. Um, the MVPs of the game were uh, Xavier Smith uh, from FAMU. He put on a show at, at wide receiver. And Jason Dumas from Southern uh, had a huge game. He was the defensive MVP. And, all you know, it was just a really, really good, good, good game, good outing, good weather. Um, just a fun thing to do. Hopefully, you know, this can continue to grow and be a thing in, in the New Orleans area, man, from, from, now, from, from now on. You know, I think it's something that, you know, I look forward to uh, having gone to both of these games. So, you know, it was just – Another opportunity to see some guys play their last "quote unquote" collegiate football game, and seeing some of you know some of the players that you know and are familiar with, and being able to see some of the guys that you haven't had a chance to see uh, from some of the other conferences. Also, man, shout out to to my boy Blue. Man was able to uh, holler at Blue and chop it up for a second with him. Uh, so shout out to Blue. Blue is the goat of this. Y'all know, y'all know how he get down. So uh, salute to him, and just was really nice to catch up with him. I know a few other um, other people out there didn't get a chance to catch up with them, but you know we'll we'll make those connections as we go forward. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of the game, man. Uh, we're gonna look at the stats for the game. You know, not that they mean a lot, but you know it's always good to see what happens. Uh, team stats: first downs. Um, team um, Team Gaither had eleven first downs to twelve for Team Robinson. Uh, team Gaither was one of 11 on third down. Team Robinson, one of 12. 
Uh, Team Gaither one of three on fourth down. Uh, Robinson one of one of one. 196 total yards for Team Gaither. 190 for Team Robinson. Uh, both both teams pretty much were uh getting it done through the air to an extent. Uh, 135 yards passing for Gaither. 184 for Robinson. 15 to 23. Um, no no interceptions. Uh, 20 or 27 for Team Robinson. Uh, no interceptions. 61 yards rushing for Team Gaither. Uh, they had 26 attempts, 2.3 yards per carry. And Team Robinson, 20 attempts and six yards. So they had one, uh, had 0.3 yards per carry. Not a lot, like I said, not a lot of running in this game. You know, it was just one of those, you know, the defenses were very stout. Um, I, and it, it was like that last year too. You know, both defenses have been ahead of the offenses, which is something that you, you know, you kind of anticipate. Um, but then maybe not to this extent. Um, one uh, penalties eleven for one seventeen for Team uh, Gaither, eight for seventy three for Team Robinson, and uh, time of possession thirty one fifteen for Team Gaither, thirty twenty eight forty five for Team Robinson. Uh, individually, uh, let's see if it comes up. Uh, Jalen Fowler uh, led Team Gaither uh, twelve or thirteen for hundred and eleven yards. Jakari Grant. Two or seven for 17 yards. DJ Golat, one for three for seven yards. Uh, Alonzo, Alfonso Graham led Team Gaither with uh, five carries for 21 yards. Tyler King, two for 10. DJ Golat, two for nine. Uh, receiving Tyler Bar- Barnes had two catches for 37 yards. Antoine Murray, three for 29. Miles Wright, three for 28. Uh, Larry Harrington led Team Robinson with nine kit nine completions, fifteen attempts, one hundred and three yards, and one touchdown. Uh, Boba McDaniel seven of seven for forty one yards. Skylar Perry four for five for forty yards. Uh, Quishon Bird had one carry for four yards. AJ Davis three for two. Emmanuel Wilson three for two. Skylar Perry three for one. Uh, Harrington three for one. Scott <coughs> four for one. Xavier Smith. Had six catches for 85 yards and a touchdown. He averaged 14.2 yards per catch. Uh, Jaden Thomas, four for 67, 16.8 yards per catch. Isaiah Cox, three for 27. CJ Bolar, two for 10. Uh, Devon McCoy, two for nine. And Jacor Rankin, two for three. Uh, looking at some of the guys on defense, because they did not list the defensive stats on the, um, on the box score. So um, I had to kind of reach in and 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 find some information. So uh, first and foremost, man, this information comes from Kyle T. Mosley um, from HBCU Legends. So salute to him. Uh, he 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 does a really great job with all this info. Uh, some of the top defensive standouts um, from Team Robinson um, were um, Jason Dumas from Southern. He um, he had three sacks and three tackles for loss to earn the defensive MVP. He also played some fullback. So, you know, kind of cross-training him, giving him another avenue to, you know, to have some success. So he was able to play on both sides of the ball. Uh, Nelson Jordan from Alabama State had a big game. He also had two and a half sacks and five tackles on the night and brought a huge crowd with him, man. Every time he made a play, man, his people were going were going ham. So he definitely was a big-time player in his game. And I, I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but he did lead the, the swag in sacks last season um, with 10. So – he definitely is a guy to keep his eyes on, out on. Uh, Cam Peterson from Southern had another big game, one and a half tackles, for, one and a half sacks, and six tackles and a forced fumble. Uh, Kevin Victorian from Prairie View had one sack and two tackles. Uh, Ray Estes from Grambling had one pass breakup and five tackles. Kieran Kinsler from Alcorn one pass breakup and two tackles. Uh, Claude and Cherylis from Alcorn had two tackles. Also. Um, the team, I mean, both defenses were very stout, but that team Robinson defensive front, uh, everybody they played on that, uh, Reagan, Peterson, Lewis, um, Dumas, Ronnie Thomas from Valley, you know, I mean, that was like a nightmare for a quarterback defensive line, man, that like those top sweat guys were just getting it done, um, all, all game long. Um, so you know, that defensive front was really solid. The linebackers played well. And, you know, they, they made it hard for quarterbacks to have any success in this game. But, this you know, this has been a defensive game the last two years. And, you know, maybe 
the, the offensive side are starting to step up a little bit, but it's tough, you know, in, in only a week's worth of practice uh, to kind of develop that chemistry and, and, and to be able to move the ball. But all in all, like I said, it was a really fun weekend, well, a fun day, put it that way, um, to go out and, and, and catch a little football. Um, have, you know, they had the fan fest outside. You know, the, the, the atmosphere was, was pretty good. And the, like I said, the crowd really kept things moving um, because a game like that, you know, it can get, you know, a little a little tedious because, you know, the offenses are not clicking. And if that's what you, you know, you're not looking for, it's hard for you to find it sometimes. So um, it's just, you know, one of the things where you're just glad to be able to catch a little bit more football. And now with that, you know, with that part over, you, you start to move on to the next the next portion of, of the draft process, which would be our uh, pro days and everything like that. So, um we are, you know, we'll continue to cover everything that takes place with with this, and um, just salute to everybody for putting this game on. Yeah, look forward to next year's game. So let's jump over to the round ball, man. We're gonna talk a little swag women's basketball. Uh, the season is starting to draw to a to a close. Um, after today, after yesterday's action, there are three games left. Basically, uh, some teams have two, but uh, the majority have three. So not, you know, not a lot of basketball left to be played. Uh, looking at the women's scores from yesterday, uh, Bethune Cookman lost to Southern 58 to 40. Uh, Gramlin beat Fam U 61-46. Prairie and Alcorn had a high, high scoring game. Uh, the Panthers won that game 98 to 88. Jackson State beat Texas Southern 66 to 43. And Alabama State beat Alabama AM 69 to 57. Pine Bluff beat Valley 95 to 60. So that was another another thumping. Two games with teams scoring over 90 points. So a lot of offense in some of these games. Um, looking at the Monday games, Gramlin is at Bethune Cookman. That's a 4:30 tip on the Cat Eye Network. Uh, Southern at Florida and them 4:30 tip on the FAMU uh, Athletics Facebook page. Prairie View is at Jackson State 5:30 tip off. Uh, JSU Sports Network. And Texas Southern is at all corn. That's a 530 tip. That's the HBCU goal game of the day. So definitely make sure you check that out. And um looking, let's look at the women's standings, man. Like I said, as we start to make our way toward the end of the season, uh Jackson State uh, basically has has won the SWAC championship regular season. Uh they're 14 and 1. They will have to lose out um to to even have a tie. But they beat uh, Alabama State, so they will hold a tiebreaker anyway. So they're fourteen and one, seventeen and eight overall. They won eleven straight games. Alabama State, the Hornets are hot. They're twelve and four, uh, 11, fifteen and twelve overall, and they've won six games in a row. Uh, Prairie View is eleven and five, fourteen and thirteen. They've won four games in a row, so they've been pretty hot. Uh, but Alabama A and M is eleven and five as well, thirteen and thirteen overall. They've lost one Southern. Is heating up again. They have uh, 10 and 5, 13 and 13. They've won four, five, four in a row. Uh, Pine Bluff starting to come back 9 and 7. They are uh, 11 and 15 overall. They've won two straight. Bethune Cookman is 9 and 7, 10 and 16. They've lost four in a row, so they're cooling off. Gramlin is 7 and 8, 8 and 18 overall. They've won one. Alcorn is 6 and 9, 10 and 16 overall. They've lost two in a row. Uh, Fam U three and thirteen six uh, three and thirteen five and twenty two overall they've lost six in a row. Uh, Texas Southern two and fourteen two and twenty five overall they've lost two straight. And Valley is zero and sixteen with a two and twenty five record. Uh, they've lost nineteen games in a row. So let's go ahead and start to take a look at how the tournament will shape up if it started today. Um, definitely, Fam U Texas Southern and Valley would be out. Um, they are, are are way too far out of out of out of the mix with not enough time to make up any space. That leaves nine teams battling it out for the for the tournament. Um, Jackson State is obviously the solid one seed. Um, right now, Alabama State is the two seed with um, two games left. They they don't play again until uh, next uh, next week uh, when they will play uh, Gramlin um, on um, Thursday. They will play Gramlin. I mean, excuse me, Thursday they will play Southern. So uh, they, they don't play again until till next week. So they can kind of rest and observe. 
So they only have two games left. Prairie View is, is 11 and 5, and they're tied with Alabama AM right now. Um, let's look at how this tiebreaker will shape up. Um, these two teams have faced off. Um, Prairie View beat, Prairie View lost to Alabama AM on, on the road. Um, I think these two teams only played once this season. So that would definitely that tiebreaker would go to to the Bulldogs. So right now Alabama and them would be the third seed in the tournament um, due to the tiebreaker. Um, they'll put Purdue at fourth Southern right now because they're um, a half game back. They will be fifth place. Uh, Bethune Cookman and Pine Bluff are tied at nine and seven for the sixth spot. Uh, let's take a look at that head to head matchup. Uh, let's see. Right now, those two teams, they, um, let's see. Uh, Bethune Cookman beat, uh, beat Pine Bluff in their matchup. So, um, Bethune Cookman would, would hold that tiebreaker. So that will put them right now in the sixth spot. Bethune Cookman would, I mean, Pine Bluff would be seven. And then Groundland would be eight. And Alcorn would be right there behind them at nine, just waiting. Uh, one spot, one game out of that that mix. So um, there's still a lot of room for movement. There's only a two game difference between the uh, the sixth place team and the ninth place team. Um, so there's still a, you know still some room for movement um, in a lot of spots. But right now, uh, if the tournament started today, Jackson State would play at Grambling. Uh, Pine Bluff would play Alabama State. Uh, Bethune Cookman would play. Prairie View, no, but then Cookman will play Alabama and m and Southern, and Prairie View will face off uh, in the four or five matchup. So, like I said, still a lot of room. There's still, you know, three teams are for sure out, um, and, and all corns kind of hanging around in that ninth spot with the opportunity to make it into the tournament. So, this is going to come down to the last, the last games of the season, the actual last game of the season. This will come down to that. Um, after Monday's games, will I sit down and do a more in-depth um, standings breakdown and, and seating possibilities and scenarios? And I'm going to try to go just do a deep, deep dive into this. So um, that'll be coming um, sometime next week. Uh, switching over to the men's side, and it's, it's just as hectic, um, if not more, um, because there aren't as many teams on the men's side who are just like totally out of the mix. A um, lot of, you know, still a lot of movement to be made. And um, let's look at the scores from yesterday. Uh, Southern continues to slide, man. This is the coldest team in basketball. Um, this team just a few weeks ago was in first place. Um, they have continued to lose. And don't, doesn't, don't really seem to be able to right the ship. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about that in a minute. But uh, Southern loses to Bethune Cookman by a score of 60 to 53. Uh, Prairie View uh, beat Alcorn on the road 75 71. Gremlin beat FAMU 69 to 55. Uh, Alabama AM beat Alabama State 55 to 50. Texas Southern lost to Heartbreaker to Jackson State 71 to 69. And Valley beat Pine Bluff 78 to 74. That's a tough, tough loss for the Golden Lions um, to lose the Valley at this time. Monday's game, Southern is at FAMU. That's a seven o'clock tip on the uh, Florida AM Facebook page. Gramlin is at Bethune Cookman, also a seven o'clock tip on the Cat Eye Network. Uh, Prairie View is at Jackson State, 7 30 tip, uh, Jackson State Sports Network. And all, Texas Southern and all corn play at 7 30. It'll probably be more like eight o'clock on the HBCU Go game of the day. So pretty good, you know, some very important games, man. All these games have, have, have implications for, for teams for different reasons. Um, looking at the standings right now, Alcorn and Gremlin are tied at 12-3. and three. Alcorn did beat Gremlin in their only matchup this season, so Alcorn has a tiebreaker over Gremlin right now. Alcorn is 15-12 and 12. overall. They've lost one. Uh, they they had a nice winning streak snap. Uh, Groundland is nineteen and eight, so they are, they are, they are gonna win twenty games uh, more this season. So that's definitely a good number to me. Twenty twenty wins is just a good 
a good college basketball number. Um, they've won six games in a row. And with those two power five wins, if they can win the tournament, you know, maybe that can help their resume. And maybe Gremlin, if they made the tournament, they may be able to be a 15 seed um, if they um, were able to win out and then win the tournament. Um, I, I think they, you know, I think they played a lot of really good games. Um, and it helps that the two teams they beat that are power five teams have winning records as well. So um, that's definitely something to keep an eye on, especially um, as you see some of these tournaments go on and there's some upsets that might be some room made for teams. So um, it, it's probably um, it, it's probably your best bet for Gremlin to win the tournament. Number one, it'd be great because that would be their first time winning a swag tournament. And number two, right now, I still I think they are the best team right now um, in the league. I mean, you know, if you look at the overall body of work, um, they are, are right up there. So uh, right now, Gremlin is tied for first, but all corn holds a tiebreaker. So, you know, that that tiebreak, that first place finish is great because it gives you the NIT bid in your back pocket um, in case you fall short in the tournament. So that just gives you another opportunity for postseason play. So that's gonna this is gonna be a battle that's gonna come down to the end of the season um, as these two teams kind of kind of race to the end. Uh, Southern is tied with Jackson State for third at nine and six. Southern holds the tiebreaker over Jackson State. Uh, in their only meeting, Southern beat them. Um, Southern is 13 and five. They've lost three in a row. Um, Jackson State is 10 and 18. They've lost, they won one. Alabama and them is only a half game behind those two teams at nine and seven. Uh, they're 13 and 16 overall. They won one. They played Grambling and Southern to close out their season. So, um, two tough games for the Bulldogs to finish out their season. Um, on the road, those are two tough games. Now they did beat Southern and they lost to Gremlin. So, you know, you know, that they do have, you know, some success against one of the teams directly in front of them. Um, but you never know, you know, when you take it to the road. Uh, Prairie View is um sixth place at eight and eight. Texas Southern is is tied with Bethune Cookman at seven and nine. Um, looking at the tiebreaker for that one. Uh, Texas Southern obviously has made a huge turnaround, you know, even that close loss to Jackson State, uh, notwithstanding, uh, they have been one of the hotter teams toward the end of the season. Um, interesting thing, TSU and JSU had <laughs> both, uh, both their matchups were two point games at the end of the game. So they, those, these, these two teams match up extremely well. Um, so Texas Southern beat Bethune Cookman in their only matchup. Um, so they do have the tiebreaker over over the uh, Wildcats. So Texas Southern would be sitting in that seventh spot. And right now, like I say, if there was any team that I really would not want to play, it would be uh, it would be Texas Southern. I mean, they just are a team that knows how to put it together in the you know in the final portions of the season. So you know you kind of want to not put yourself in that position to play them. But you know, wherever you finish is 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 where you finish. So you don't you know you don't want to run from anybody. But you know, if you had to say you know if that was a team, I would just rather not have to play early in a tournament. It would it would be them. Um, obviously, as you make it past the first round, you know it is whoever's up in front of you. But um, like I said, Bethune Cookman would be the eighth spot. They picked up a big win over Southern to get themselves back in the in the mix and the opportunity for them to make their first ever swag tournament. Uh, Pine Bluff and Alabama State are tied for ninth place. Um, they are only a game out, so still a lot of a lot of wiggle room. Um, both of these two teams are only have two games left, so they won't be playing again until Thursday. Um, so they'll know a little bit more about where they stand um, after um, after Monday's action. Uh, Gremlin plays Bethune Cookman, so that's an opportunity for uh, Bethune Cookman maybe to slide back again. Um, and Texas Southern plays Alcorn. That's another huge game. So there's still a lot of room to move for those two teams. Um, they're not out of it um, by any stretch. Um, they can win. That you know they can win, and the teams in front of them lose. They might find themselves in the spot. Uh, Pine Bluff is ten and nineteen overall. They've lost seven games in a row. So they have really, really been cold um, at, at, toward the end of the season. And, and the Alabama State's lost four games in a row. Um, they're eight and twenty-one. Uh, Fam, you is five and eleven. They are only two games out of that last spot. Now it's going to take some work 
but they still have opportunity to kind of find themselves in the mix. Um, they're seven and twenty overall. They lost one. Valley is four and twelve. Uh, five and twenty-five overall. They have won one. Um, they're only three games out of the out of the spot. So mathematically, um, mathematically, everybody's still eligible for the tournament. You know, with three games left, mathematically, um, realistically, mo- um, you probably um, look at, realistically. I still think even fam, you as a realistic shot valley uh, would need some help uh, from some of the teams in front of them, and they would have to win their last two games. Um, the best valley could finish in six and twelve, so they would need. Um, they are basically out of it because, like I said, they 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 only have two games left. And they would have to – they would be 6-12. and 12. So, uh, the teams in front of them still uh, – the, the, the ninth – they place team, they have nine losses. They can't – they um, they can't finish anything worse than um, – wait, my math is – yeah, they uh, the, – yeah, these two teams have already played 16 games too, so – um, they they only have two games left, so the worst they could finish would be seven and eleven. So Valley is out of the race. Uh, fam, you would have to win out. Um, they have two games left. They would have to win out and need the two teams in front of them to lose. And basically, the people you know they would they would need a lot of people in front of them to lose. So mathematically, they're in it, but realistically, they're probably out. So that pretty much puts you at uh, ten teams in the mix for that last spot. So. Still a lot of basketball left. Um, still a lot of movement. Like I said, those top four seeds are still up for grabs. Uh, Alabama A&M is still in the mix for one of those spots. You know, it's going to be a lot of movement in these next couple games. And like I said, um, I'll cover um, – I'll go more in-depth with the standings and seedings um, sometime this week after Monday's action as we start to make our way to the end of the season and the start of the SWAC tournament. And like I said, we'll we'll cover the whole SWAC tournament uh, as it comes up. Uh, let's let's go over some softball scores because there's been some action uh, taking place. Um, we'll just start. Um, we we'll just start at at, at, Monday, at Tuesday. Uh, well, Southern Miss and Valley was canceled on Tuesday. Um, on Wednesday, Nichols beat Alcorn nine to nothing. Alabama State beat Albany State twelve to one. Uh, Northwestern State beat Grambling two to one on Thursday. Uh, Washington beat Bethune Cookman sixteen to nothing, and UC Riverside beat Bethune Cookman seven to six on Friday. Uh, let's see, on Friday, Iowa beat Bethune Cookman five to three. Alabama State beat Alcorn two to one. Nickel State beat Pine Bluff eleven to zero. Uh, Arizona State beat Bethune Cookman five to three on Saturday. Fam, you beat Southern two to nothing. Jackson State beat Kentucky State five to one. Alabama State beat Alcorn eight to nothing. Jackson State beat Tuskegee six to five. South Dakota State beat Valley eleven to nothing. Southern Miss beat Pine Bluff seven to one. Alabama State beat Southern six three. Grambling beat Kentucky State fifteen to nothing. Grambling beat Tuskegee nine to one. Southern beat Alabama A and M four to three. Uh, Nichols beat Pine Bluff thirteen to two. And uh, Alabama and them beat FAMU 6-2. Today's action, uh, Kansas State plays Texas. Kansas plays Texas Southern in Austin, Texas. Texas Southern also plays the University of Texas in a tournament in Austin. Alabama and them plays Florida A&M in Montgomery. Tuskegee plays Jackson State in Jackson. Missouri State plays Valley in Conway, Arkansas. Gremlin plays Tuskegee in Jackson. Pine Bluff plays Yale in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Kentucky State plays Jackson State in Jackson. Southern plays Alabama State in Montgomery. Um, Southern plays Alabama and M and Groundland plays Kentucky State. Uh, looking at some uh, some baseball scores um, from this weekend, like I said, you know, a lot of tournaments and things are taking place. Um, so there's a lot of action going on. And, um, a lot of stuff to kind of keep tabs with, but we'll just kind of go over some of the scores um, as as they are are coming through. So we'll go back to uh, the week past, and we'll start at uh, at t- at Tuesday. Uh, LSU beat Southern eighteen to four. Uh, Mercer beat FAMU twenty one to five. Pine Bluff lost to Little Rock eight to three. Grambling lost to Arkansas nine to seven. 
Tennessee beat Alabama and them 10 to nothing. FIU beat Bethune Cookman 12 to 2. Southeastern beat Jackson State 19 to nothing. Troy beat all Alabama State 10 to 2. Stephen of Austin beat Prairie View 11 to 1. On Wednesday, Valley lost to Memphis 19 to 10. Uh, Fam, you lost to Mercer 8 to 7. Tennessee beat Alabama and them 23 to 1. Uh, Southern lost to Fam, you on Friday 12 to 6. Alabama and them beat Jackson State 13 to 1. Uh, these games were in the Andre Dawson Classic. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Roosevelt beat all corn 15 to 3. Jackson State um, won that game 3 to nothing. Uh, Purdue Fort Wayne beat lost to Bethune Cookman 13 to 8. Alabama State beat Gramlin 10 to 4. On Saturday, Gramlin beat Alabama and them 3 to 2. Valley beat Pine Bluff 12 to 5. Alcorn won that game over Roosevelt 6 to 5. Uh, UNO beat FAMU 12 to nothing. Purdue Fort Wayne lost to Bethune Cookman 9 to 5. Uh, Valley beat, lost to Pine Bluff 11 to 8. Alabama State beat Southern 7 to 5. So a um, lot of action going on. Like I said, they got the Andre Dawson Classic going on in New Orleans right now. Um, so there's a lot of good baseball in that, in that taking place. Um, if you're in the New Orleans area, you should definitely check those games out um, because that's a lot of good HBCU baseball um, taking place. So um, definitely want to, you know, you definitely want to keep keep tabs on that. Um, I, I mean, I love I love early season baseball, but when swag baseball starts to start to you know really take off, um, there's a lot of good games that's going to take place. Let's take a let's let's take a more better look at the Andre Dawson Classic because the swag the swag uh, the swag calendar was kind of all over the place. Uh, Friday's action: Alabama A and M beat Purdue thirteen to one. Uh, in the new, there's a new seven inning run rule. Um, it, it, it covers all of college baseball. If you're up by 10 after the seventh, the game is over. So Alabama and them beat uh, Purview 13 to one in the seven inning rule. Um, fam, you beat Southern 12 to six. Jackson State beat uh, University of New Orleans three to nothing. Alabama State beat Groundland 10 to four. On Saturday, Groundland beat Alabama and them three to two. Uh, University of New Orleans beat Fam U 12 to nothing. Jackson State beat Prairie View 5 to 4. Alabama State beat Southern 7 to 5. And on today's action, Prairie View is playing um, Florida AM at 11 o'clock uh, at the University of New Orleans. Um, Groundland is playing Jackson State at 12 o'clock at the uh, uh, Major League Baseball Youth Academy. Alabama State is playing UNO at 2 o'clock at the University of New Orleans. And Southern is playing uh, Alabama and them at three o'clock at the Major League Baseball Youth Academy. So if you're in the New Orleans area, man, once you go ahead out and catch one of those games, um, you know, because there's some good baseball going on and, you know, we want to really show love to everything that's taking place. So that's going to do it for today's show, man. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and chopping it up with me. Um, we'll be back on Tuesday um, or Wednesday whenever I drop it. Uh, to cover the Monday action and to start out with deep dive into the swag, uh, swag standings as we head into the final weekend of the, of the season. So that's going to do it. Like I said, man, I appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Y'all make sure to like, share, and subscribe and we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.